This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. And we're back here on Kansas City Sports Network with another episode of The Breakdown. I'm Matt Hamilton. Yes, my background's a little bit different. I'm coming to you from London, England, where we've been doing the Up and Adam show with Vandal K. Adams all week. Awesome. And Chase Daniels here back from uh, his trip to Columbia, Missouri over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on, man? How's how's London treating you? Do you you have some pints yet over there, or what are you doing? Yeah, it was halfway through on uh, when we, when we started the show, so uh, it's been it's been good. It's been the fans out here. I gotta say, like, the fans out here are so incredible, and they just get better and better every single year. They're really into the NFL out here. They're wild, and like I played over the London game like three or four different times, and every time it's wild. It doesn't even it doesn't matter if the, who's playing over. Like I went over there with the Chiefs. And we were playing uh, the Lions in 2015. And there was like very little Chiefs or Lions jersey. It was every possible jersey you could yeah. possibly think of. And most on- honestly, like they love the kickers over there. Like yeah. they love field goals. So every time it's a kickoff or a punt or a field goal, the stadium is the absolute loudest. It's the craziest thing yeah. I've ever seen in my entire life. To extra points, they go nuts. But I got to say, though, that was my experience too the first time that I came here. And now, like, it seems like they really understand the game a lot more, and they're yeah. they're really into it. And and this yeah. past one, it was uh, the Bills-Jaguars game that we were at, and Bills fans took that place over, and it was so loud. It felt like a Bills home game. It was it was wild, but... I know. Um, they know how to cheer, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but beyond that, we saw the Chiefs get, a, get another win on Sunday. It wasn't, you know... Necessarily the prettiest performance against the Vikings, but wins are wins, and they are stacking them right now. What stood out to you the most from Casey's performance? Well, exactly what you just said. They're stacking wins, and that's what you have to do early in the season when your team, other teams like the Bills, right, and the, and the Bengals, they're sort of falling down below it. And, and the whole thing for these Chiefs uh, like organization is you just want to be able to get that one seed. Like that buy, like when they switch from two, two teams getting a buy to one team getting a buy, Early season success, while you're trying to find your identity on offense, defense, and special teams, that is the kicker here. You have to win games that probably you shouldn't have. And the Chiefs just continue to stack wins. Will there be some falters along the way? Yeah. Are they playing their best ball all, like, 22 guys? No, they're not. And they, But they're continuing to win, and that's what stood out. And honestly, they're going to get everyone's best shot. We talk about it all the time. Every single week, they're going to get their best shot. And Minnesota gave them their best shot. And, and it was a difficult day sort of on offense. You say difficult day. They still put up 27 points on offense. But from a protection standpoint, that's what we talked about last week when we were uh, visiting this game is that the Minnesota Vikings, they have this cover zero defense. we got a couple plays we're going to show you here a little bit later. This cover zero defense, it puts a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks and receivers to be on the same page. And it puts a lot of pressure on the offensive line to give Patrick Mahomes just a hair more second to throw the ball. And I thought they did that for the most part this game. Yeah, they certainly did. And and to your point, the Chiefs are currently, with everything that's gone on, they're the number one seed in the AFC right now through five weeks. So it, it, it's pretty incredible what they've been able to do. And you're right. It is so important now um, that they took that that extra buy away. And the margin for error is sm- so small. All these games count the same at the end of the season. So there are, you know, the NFL, every single game is so significant. So that ability yeah. to stack wins is big. And I do have to give you credit before we get into the film here. You were all over it. You talked about Minnesota's aggressive defense, the blitzing we we're going to see from Brian Flores. We really saw a lot of that. You also talked about how Jordan Addison was probably going to have a pretty big day out of the slot. We saw that as well. So just want to just want to put that out there before we get into things. Let's go. I might know a little bit of something what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but let's do it. Let's dig into some of these plays that we saw from the Chiefs offense on Sunday. And we'll start with... Patrick Mahomes being Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, so what? I mean, it's just Patrick Mahomes being Patrick Mahomes. That's exactly what you saw. You got a little jet sweep motion behind. You got Justin Ross down here, right? And all that Patrick Mahomes is going to do, he's going to see the safety go back to the middle of the field. They're showing man-to-man coverage in um, pre-snap, but they ended up going to a shell coverage. They go to a four-cheat. Harrison Smith cheats to the four-receiver side. Patrick Mahomes sees it and knows he gets a one-on-one with Justin Ross, and Justin Ross literally just goes and big boys this corner down here. It's amazing to me. The throw was really, really good because Harrison Smith actually gets back into um, the picture, but you see there 
pre-snap. Mahomes just barely looks it off and throws a laser beam. It's what we like to call a one ball, right? There's two, three different types of footballs. A one ball is where you drive the football. A two ball is up and over a linebacker on the second level. And a three ball is like a fade ball. This, to me, should have been like a two ball, but he saw Harrison Smith going back and drove his driver, man. That's what we like to call it, his driver out of the bag. And, man, it is a laser beam to Justin Ross, who big boys him. And you love it from a play design perspective, too. They know once they send Tony in motion that it's going to create the one-on-one. And just Mahomes also being aware of exactly what they're trying to do here, what they're trying to attack and, and getting there and throwing a perfect ball. And Justin Ross, a lot of fans have been calling for more Justin Ross. He's a fan favorite. They want to see more of him. What's impressed you about what you've seen from him? And do you think he does need to see the field more? Well, I, you know, I think he could he could definitely be that guy who um, reminds me a little bit of a uh, Mike Williams, Chargers here. Big body, faster than people give him credit for. Really good at uh, at balls that are jump balls, okay? And he's, he's, he's very fast, and he just needs to get opportunities. He just needs to get experience. The more experience he gets, the more opportunity he gets, the better he'll be. No, and it's uh, it, it's been really cool because again, we're at a point in in time in his career where there were questions as to whether or not he'd be able to take an NFL field again with the injuries that he's suffered. Yeah. So it's pretty awesome to see him out there making big plays, and hopefully we see it uh, continue as this year goes on. But as we move forward here, we got to get to this play because again, the aggressive Brian Flores defense going cover zero here, and yeah. was this more Mahomes magic or what do you think? So so listen, I, I got crushed on Twitter for saying this was luck. And the more I look at it, look, he's throwing the ball up to get his playmaker, which Justin Watson, you just see him week after week going up and making a play. And the more I watch it, look, there's an intersection between skill and luck right here. You're going to see the Minnesota Vikings, they're in cover zero defense. Okay. They got seven guys up. They only got six blockers, five offensive linemen and a running back. And we're going to roll it here and they don't have a hot answer. Like, that's the thing. This is one of the few times because I think this is third and long. Okay, and Minnesota probably hasn't shown on third and extra long, 12 or 13 plus right here to show cover zero. Mahomes just says, hey, I don't have a cover zero beater. I'm just going to take a seven-step drop out of gun, hit my back foot, get smoked by two unblocked defenders. Okay, they didn't block this right. And this this Minnesota defense, you see both of these safeties here, they don't play like a man-to-man cover zero defense. They play a four-cross route read defense and Justin Watson just goes up and big bodies number 24 I think 24 just honestly mistimed his jump a little bit this ends up a highlight real play for Mahomes and honestly I mean it's a little bit of it's a little bit of both like it's a little bit of luck it's a little bit of skill it's a little bit of just trusting your guy because listen I've made throws in the NFL where I'm just like oh man I shouldn't have completed this now Mahomes thinks he can complete every single pass which I love about him that's what makes his um you know, play style so aggressive. But the way, what was most impressive to me was the way he was falling back and he threw it on one leg to get it over that defender. Yeah, and and another thing you mentioned a few weeks ago too, you talked about it. You could see the trust really developing with Justin Watson and how that really seems to be the wide receiver that when he's in a bind, he trusts the most to bail him out and make those big plays. And we've kind of seen it week after week. Yeah, it's like it's like the highlight reel catch of the week. We saw the Bears play where Mahomes just absolutely dimed them. We see it this play. We see it every week. And yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily know. It's like, hey, like, is, am I looking for Watson or does the play design and the play concept take me to that place? But Watson's uh, a good beneficiary on that. That's for sure. And a tremendous play from him. He it seems like he's gaining confidence every single week. Um, and. You know who doesn't need any more confidence is the guy we're going to get to on this last play. Uh, we got to go to the touchdown. This is after the injury, comes back into the game, and this is just Mahomes and Kelsey, again, being Mahomes and Kelsey and yeah. being on the same page always. I mean, not much more you can say about it. And um, love this route concept, and you're going to see that they have six defensive uh, people on the line, okay? This is way different than the other cover zero we saw. This is still considered cover zero, but it's cover zero whole because – the free safety, Harrison Smith, he's not pressuring. He actually has just like he's floating around, okay? So they're bringing six, and guess what? The Chiefs have six to block, so Mahomes isn't hot on this. So this is probably like when I see defenses do this type of coverage, cover zero hole, they're bringing six, but you have six blockers. You don't have to all-out pressure. Like, I love it as a as a quarterback. And you're going to see here, 
all Watson and MBS are doing, they're just running a, a shallow cross and a back in line. And, and, and all Kelsey's doing is just, hey, come here, turn around, sit down, let me score a touchdown. Okay, there's four defenders for three, and they're sort of boxing is what we like to call it. Well, the box, seven, and both safeties, 24, they should be on Kelsey. As soon as they see two go uh, to the other two defenders on the inside of the box, they should be sitting there waiting for him. And it's an easy, easy score for, for Travis Kelsey right here. Yeah, and you can kind of see it. They're, they're reading the routes more than they're reading Mahomes here. And I know, you know, again, you're doing what you're taught to. Like, you see Harrison Smith. His eyes are on are trying to diagnose what this route concept is. But if you look at Mahomes, like his eyes get right to Travis Kelsey. You know where he's going with the football. How much of it as a defender when you play this offense do you just have to, you know, do you look at it like I just ha I have to read Mahomes and where he's going with the football and just yeah, try to jump some things, especially yeah. down in this area? That's a great call. And, and a lot of times, you know, this offense, I played in it for five years, six years. It's so much predicated on what the defense is doing. And obviously Mahomes is probably looking at Kelsey pre-snap here and it doesn't matter what they're doing. But a lot of times, hey, He's just reading defenders. He knows right now that he has six man pressure. Okay. He's not hot. He get he has time. He doesn't have to rush. He he lets the route concept come to fruition and he finds Kelsey easily for a touchdown. And that's the best thing about this offense is you're just reading, right? Like you don't really like pick a guy out pre-snap. You're just reading the play. Okay. And that's what Andy Reid's so good at, so good at teaching Mahomes. And that's why Mahomes is so good in this offense. Not only are you just reading the plays, but also you're just you're playing ball. Like some stuff rarely works some stuff works all the time and this is a play i see down here all the time on time in rhythm to travis kelsey just big body and sitting down right there at the one yard line falling in for a touchdown it's a beautiful thing and it's something we see it seems like every single week from these two um and hopefully kelsey is feeling good ready to go for thursday night football because it is a quick turnaround as they play the broncos this week and Denver's defense, I just dug up some of these numbers for K this afternoon, and, and it's pretty remarkable. They're giving up the most points per game since the 1950 Baltimore Colts. Uh, they're giving up more yards per game than any defense in NFL history right now. So it's not pretty over there. Uh, but from a Chiefs perspective, obviously that defense is struggling terribly. What do you kind of key on, look at when you're going into a game against a defense that's been this bad? Yeah, I mean, you just want to run your offense, honestly. Like, like I'm sure they're being told, hey, this is that, this is that. But they're still an NFL defense, right? And they can still put games together. They're struggling to find their identity in Denver right now. And honestly, it's not going to get any easier on a short week against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, which I, I thought Andy Reid's game plans are are so excellent on short weeks because there's a, there'll be a lot of carryover from that Vikings game, and half the game plan will be new. So they're not having to learn a brand new game plan. So there's any carryover plays – maybe from the first two, three, four weeks of the season, they'll put back in that game plan because it's oh, wow. GVA. What do you say? GVA, good for us all. Okay, so they there will definitely be some new green dots, as he likes to call them, some new shots, some new plays, especially in third down and red zone. But their base pass list, screen game, run action, play game, uh, a play pass game, will look uh, eerily similar to what we've seen early in the year. Wow, I love, I love that insight from you because I've always, I've always wondered, you know, at the NFL level, going into a short week, what the approach is, how you work. That's that's awesome to hear. And uh, and, and it seems like he, he really has it down to his science. Um, on the other side, Russell Wilson, it's it's gotten lost in all the, you know, all the terrible things that have been happening there in Denver. I feel like he's playing a lot better this year. It hasn't been perfect. There have been some ugly moments. They're one and four, we know. But it looks like he's kind of rediscovering the Russell Wilson that, you know, we know and love. Yeah, it's the Sean Payton effect. I mean, it truly is. Like, like if you look at Denver overall, like the problem is not Russ. Last year, the problem was Russ. It's not Russ. In yep. fact, he's playing better stat wise than he has in a long, long time. Okay, he's found his mojo. He's found his 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 way back. They they just don't have a run game right now to help him. So he's having to run for his life. I watched the Jets game uh, pretty closely when we were flying back from Columbia, and there's just nothing open. Like they don't have a guy out there. It just it just becomes like. To the point, like, at what point are they going to just do a fire sale in Denver and start over? Like, like Russ is making his case for him to be the quarterback next year, but, like, he, something's got to change in Denver because it ain't going to change on Thursday night against the Chiefs, which I expect to roll. Yeah, it's uh, it's looking like it's probably going to be pretty ugly. I have to say, too, Jaleel McLaughlin, the running back, the rookie, the undrafted rookie running back is is a player, and he's somebody yep. to definitely keep an eye out for. He looks like he is a star in the making. Shades of Darren Sproles, really, in that Sean Dayton offense. 
That's exactly right. So, yeah, so, you know, again, these division games, you know, you can never take them lightly. We know what the history is between these two, but right now with the way the Broncos are looking, it does look like the Chiefs are going to keep on rolling, get to five and one, hang on to that one seed and, and keep this thing going. Yeah, anytime, anytime the Chiefs are at home, too, like there's just a yeah. certain aspect of that game. And I think the Broncos, the last time they beat the Chiefs was at 2015. I was there, I yep. believe, or 2014. Um, it was when Jamal Charles was uh, was 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 there. It was like crazy, right? So they've been yeah. utterly dominant against the Broncos, and I expect it to continue on Thursday night football. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, we'll be right here. Back here next week to break that down for you, continue to look ahead on the Chiefs schedule, and bring you all the incredible insight you can only get from Chase. Um, it's It's been awesome having you this year. Incredible stuff today, and uh, we'll see you again next week, guys. Have fun in London, bro.